So let's check out Cockpit on Rocky Linux 9. What's up guys, it's Josh back with another video and today I got an awesome tutorial and it's on an application called Cockpit. Now Cockpit is a powerful web-based tool developed by Red Hat to make server administration easier. And in this video, I wanted to walk you guys through what Cockpit is and how to set it up and demonstrate some common tasks. So let's dive right into it. All right, so I'm at Red Hat's customer portal and this is where you can find a lot of documentation about the tools that are available to you on the Red Hat. Now, of course, within the demonstration, I was showing you guys how to do this on Rocky Linux 9, but as you can see on the customer portal, you'll see that Red Hat calls it the web console. It's the exact same application. I just wanted to show you guys this so you guys can get a little information if you need to. As you can see, like right down up in here, you'll see the application is cockpit. And I think about two years ago, I did a video on Cockpit running it on Ubuntu servers. So you can use this application on other distributions. And so anyway, just to explain what Cockpit is, it's basically a user-friendly web-based graphical inf interface that simplifies server management. It's designed to make it easy to manage and monitor your Rocky Linux server. And it's very similar to using a command line, but with a graphical inter interface, which can be especially helpful for new users, as well as those who prefer a visual approach. So that's enough about the application. Let's go down and hop over to my virtual machine so I can walk you guys through how to activate it and use it. Before we move forward, I wanted to give a quick shout out to CIQ, the official partner of Rocky Linux. Rocky Linux is a Linux distribution that is intended to be a downstream complete binary compatible release using the Red Hat Enterprise Linux operating system source code. The project is led by Gregory Kurtzer, who was the founder of the CentOS project. So check out Rocky Linux at CIQ.co. All right, so I'm SSH into Rocky Linux 9, and I can show you that by catting out the OS release information under ETC, so you guys can at least see where we're at with it, and it's Blue Onyx Rocky Linux 9.2. And as you can see up here, when I logged into the server, I logged in via SSH, and right below that, you'll see this in every install, at least from this point forward. I think I started seeing it in eight, I believe, but it says activate the web console and this is the same in rail as well you'll see this if it's not activated obviously but this is how you enable cockpit cockpit is already installed it comes pre-installed on the system all you have to do is enable it now in case it's not installed let me just show you guys how to install it right fast i'm not going to run the commands but all you have to do is type sudo dnf and then install cockpit and then just go through the installation it's going to install all our dependencies for it like i said we don't have to do it because it's already installed on the system and actually let's run the install that way you guys can see it'll say that it's already installed press enter it'll go through check the system it'll basically refresh check the repositories see if we have the most current version of cockpit and as you can see, dependencies resolved, nothing to do complete because it's already installed. As you can see right here, package cockpit is already installed on the system. So just like what it said up here, all we have to do is enable cockpit. And so I'm gonna just copy this, which we could, you know, either type it out or copy it. And all you have to do is type sudo, and then you use the system CTL command, and then it says enable, and then it put now, and then cockpit socket. And that's pretty much all you have to do to get it set up. So let's go down and press enter. It'll basically create that symbolic link. So at any time you reboot the system, cockpit service will start. So that's pretty much it. So now let's access the web interface. And just so you guys know, cockpit, the default port for it is 9090. So the first thing you want to do is find out what the IP address of the server is. So we use the IP command, so IPA, and then that'll tell us the IP address of our server. So all we have to do is type in that IP address. And if you have it in a cloud or something like that, just type in that IP address in the cloud. It should, whatever cloud platform you're on, it's gonna give you the outside IP address. And you just copy, paste that into the browser and then put 9090 behind it. So let's switch over to my browser so I can walk you guys through a little bit more 
of cockpit all right so i'm back in my browser let's open up a new tab paste in our ip address and all i did was paste it in and with chrome it'll automatically try to go to it but we need to type those ports up there so i know you guys can't see this but i'm typing port 9090 and press enter and it'll it'll pop up with this connection is not private that's because we don't have a cert installed on the server and so it's just a warning just to make sure you don't go to any type of sites that have not been ver verified or validated by a server. But depending on what browser, it should have an option in here, like under advanced for me, all I had to do is hit advanced and then hit proceed. So all we gotta do is click that and that'll take us to the website. And like I said, it just doesn't have a SSL cert installed on the server. That's why it's giving us issues. But one cool thing about Rocky, Linux or Rail, whichever one you're logged into or whichever one you have cockpit on, it uses the local accounts to log into this. So you basically log in using your local account. So Josh, and then let's type in my password for it. And then you also have some other options and this is so you can log into other servers. Right now it's set to log into local host, local domain, which is this local system that we have at that IP address, but you can't connect to other servers from cockpit. But let's go down and hit log in right fast and that'll bring us to our dashboard. And this is a super dope, you know, dashboard. This is like one of the best ones. I think I showed you guys Webmin at one point, but this web console is like super cool. You could do so much with this actual web front end that is crazy. You know what I'm saying? Pretty much anything you do from the command line, you can almost do it here. And like, for instance, the first thing that'll pop up, it'll put you in limited access mode. As soon as you go to the site and log in using your will account or a pseudo account. And in order to get out of that, that which is where you want to do it, because you want to have administrative access to handle tasks on the server. All you got to do is click up here under lim limited service. And I'll show you both ways, but you can click here. It'll pull it up and basically ask you to authenticate with using your pseudo password. And that will put you in administrative mode. Or you can also hit right here where it says turn on administrative access what it'll do is it'll pop up with another box the same box basically and ask you for that pseudo password and i did that on purpose i let it fail the first time on purpose so i could show you guys uh something you'll see in the log but now we're in administrative access and you can switch back and forth i just want to show you guys that you can switch back and forth but you can limit access and then you could go back into administrative privileges whenever you need to but limited is fine if you just want to look at things and see what's going on on the server or just check certain things but administrative access is if you need to actually check change something or configure something with the server and i'll walk you guys through a lot of that now first off let me start off with the documentation so you can click right here it'll take you to the web console documentation configuration system settings if you want to you can check that out as well that'll take you to red hat's website documentation website for both the web console as well as configuration system settings it's just another article that covers it and then about console web console this breaks it out like the version and all that stuff the project website if you want to go to that as well now session i want to show you guys this but you have different styles so you got default which i use dark mode on pretty much everything that's why i defaulted to that but there's a light mode you can use that or you can go to the dark mode or you can put it on default and it'll use your default browser settings now up here on the right awesome once you're in administrative access mode then you have this option over here on the right to reboot or shut down the server so i'm gonna click the reboot first and you can send out a message to all the users that are connected to the server saying hey i'm rebooting this server in whatever time period because you have a delay as well so you can do uh one minute five minutes 20 minutes 40 minutes 60 and it's basically the reboot command because you can add a delay in there as well as with the shutdown command or you can also do no delay or a specific time if you want to specify that and then you just click reboot it'll schedule it good to go and let's hit cancel there. But if you click the down arrow right here, there is the shutdown option. So you shut down the server. Same exact menu, but this is just the shutdown command that you typically run from the command line. But you're doing it, you know, from this graphical interface. So it's super cool to actually do that. Schedule times, you know, all that stuff for root boots, maintenance, and all that good stuff with your server. Now, right here on the left hand side, you know, you got your host name. So this is localhost. I haven't changed the host name on this system, but it's running Rocky 9, you know, Blue Onyx pulls and all that information as well now your health now this talks about updates so a bug fix update available and that's only because i haven't updated the system that's why i didn't run any updates before i did this 
or enable this so you guys can see what it'll what will pop up but it'll show you certain things up here depending on if your system needs any patches or updates that are available for you and then here's your usage you can click on this and i'll take you guys to it in a second but it gives you cpu memory right out the back and we can click in here on the view metrics and it'll show you a little bit more it, it also adds the disk and the network information which there are options to see all that over here but this is just a quick way of actually seeing it so let's go back to the overview and then we got systems information so this is all the hardware details of the system if you click in there it'll bring up everything for you you know what i'm saying memory pci all that stuff for the system and like i said this is a virtual machine like you, you guys already know that so that's why a lot of this hardware doesn't look right you know versus you having it on physical hardware and then you got just some some configuration over here as well you could change your host name you could change the time your time zone location you know you can set the time based on the network time ser server is how it's that's the default it'll automatically put that in there and, and that's based on the server install you know what i'm saying you can set that up when you go through the install of the server and then let's say cancel but if you change this all you got to do is click chain it change and it'll change it on the system let's say cancel you can join it to a domain if you guys didn't know you can add this to active directory you can add these servers to active directory and use that to connect to services that are on this system the profile the performance profile it's based on the system like i said this is a virtual machine so it's it's set to a specific profile and that was done during the install the system recommends a virtual guest which that's exactly what it is so that's the profile it's using now the crypto policy is default secure shell keys you can actually show fingerprints and i'll show you guys that because i'm gonna delete this server after this but this is the machine ssh key fingerprints all that good stuff so if you need to see that information now under session this is one other thing i forgot but they do have ssh keys under here as well you can change your display language and then ssh keys so you can add your ssh keys to this server so your authentication keys so right from here you know super dope now also something else yeah that's just how you log out of the system now over here on the left hand side is your main menu and i just wanted to walk you guys through pretty much everything up here at the top left like i said you can connect to multiple hosts so right now it's showing that one host but you can connect to multiple hosts and then this is your overview so logs this is cool this is why i want to show you guys that changing the administrative access up there now that one time i didn't put the password in it showed it in the logs you know what i'm saying you can check it out you can change what you want to see you can see the last 24 hours the type of priority as far as like the type of errors that it wants that you wanted to show identifiers you know good things like that now there's another option over here on the left storage this will show you all your storage so if you got any iSCSI devices or something on this system then you can even add those here so super cool and it gives you you know constant read out up, up here at the top so readings writings on the actual drive basically monitoring that drive also breaks out the file system so there's a dvd on there for rocky os basically the installation media that i use to install this as well as the the virtual disk the roots and the boot and the sizes and all that good stuff and then you can also view the logs of your storage to see. Now, like I said earlier, it also breaks out networking. So you see a little bit more information with networking. So your transmissions, your, your receiving data, the firewall settings, you can go in and edit rules, zones, all that good stuff. So it automatically had this port open for us for COT. So we didn't have to worry about it. That's why we was able to just log right into it. I didn't have to show you any firewall settings. So like I said, if you got Rocky 9 installed or Rail 9 or Alma, you know, 9, then a lot of this stuff is already set up for you, but you can add zones and all that good stuff. So, but let's go back to networking. And I just want to show you guys, it breaks out to interfaces as well. IP addresses, you know, loopback address, all that good stuff there. And you can see the network logs as well. Now, Podman, if we had Podman installed and the service was running on this server, it'll give you some information. That's a pre-installed like add-on to cockpit that they already have there, but it'll show information about Podman here. And that's basically for containers. Since this is already a virtual machine, I'm not gonna show you guys containers on it, but accounts. So this is another cool part about it. You can create accounts, user accounts on here. And so it's, it's good to, to be able to do this especially when you're learning you know within a graphical user interface and that's the whole purpose of cockpit is so you can easily do a lot of this stuff 
in a graphical user interface. So creating accounts, even though it's not that difficult in a command line utility, but some people are intimidated by the command line, you know what I'm saying? But this is a way to at least get started, get your feet wet, and you can kind of understand the system this way. As you can see, you're good to go. I mean, if to create accounts on here, you can also create groups. It even lists out all the groups on the server. If we click under here, and that's a lot of the built-in groups on here for like applications and, and different services that are on the system. Now, next one, let's show you services. So you can check out all the services on here and you can filter them out. You can look at the states. You can look at them. You can filter them by name, description, and all that stuff. Like for instance, under active state. So let's only look at running services on the system. You'll see, you know, cockpit running and a couple other things, you know, cockpit web services running, crime D, crime job. So your crime D bus, firewall D. You'll see a lot of stuff running under here. Like I said, you can filter out. You can also look at things that are disabled and not running. And so this is a good way of troubleshooting something so you can do all that from here now targets you check that out sockets timers paths and like i said it's mainly for troubleshooting uh, you can also look at by user let's go back to system so we'll need to play around with that now here is a couple other cool ports of cockpit so applications so right now there's that podman uh, add-on as well as the storage add-on you'll see it there but that's on the system and you can remove those services from your actual server from here. And now diagnostic report, you can run a diagnostics on the server. It'll give you basically a whole bunch of information about the server. Not gonna run it, but I just wanted to at least show you that that's there. Kernel dumps. So this allows you to get some crash information if something haps, happens with the server. Now, SE Linux, let's go down and go up in here. That's a SE Linux policy. You can change this up if you need to here. You know what I'm saying? The system modifications, automation scripts, all that stuff right there. Now, one of the next things that's important, you can update your server directly from the browser. So if you click here, right now it's checking for software updates. It's gonna refresh the packages, you know, all that good stuff and show you if there are any updates for the system. And then it will allow you to update it from here. So that didn't take too long, you know what I'm saying? But it's the status, so we got one update available, and then you can also install our updates. Automatic updates right here, not set up. We didn't enable that. Kernel live package, that's, that's disabled. You can enable that from here as well. And then you can run your updates from here. So actually let's run that right fast so you guys can see. And then boom, you can reboot the system after that. And I won't reboot it right now. I'm gonna just hit ignore. I'll reboot it once we're done, but that's something you could easily do directly from cockpit. Now, lastly, I wanted to show you guys, you can connect to the terminal from here. So you can change up. Let me just start at the top, but that's where it, what you're logged in as, Josh at localhost. You can change up the font size. You can change up your appearance. You can make it light, dark, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Based on a way for you to actually see everything going on in the server in the terminal. So you can type whatever you need here. So if you if we want to run those updates from here, we could we could have ran them directly from here. And we can also install other applications. You know, pretty much any and everything you want to do with the server can be done from this terminal. So that's a super cool option. That really makes Cockpit excellent tool for administrators or at least junior administrators or people that are just getting into learning how to use Linux. So congratulations, you now have a thorough introduction to Cockpit from the installation to performing common tasks, this tool can make server management a breeze. Now remember, this is just the beginning. Cockpit offers many other features and options to explore, and you can use it to configure your server, monitor performance, and more. And if you found this tutorial helpful, please consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing for more Linux tutorials. And if you have any questions or need help with a specific task in Cockpit, feel free to leave a comment down below and I'll do my best to assist you. So thanks for watching and I hope you guys have a wonderful day. And of course, keep it tech.